Boys and girls, children of all ages, I am Dope, your idiot leader, and this is Dope Comics and my YouTube channel. Well, I just got back from a long comic safari. Went down through Alabama to Florida. Stayed in Florida when the hurricane came. I was about 200 miles away buying comic books, and now I am back in Tennessee. And, uh... As I was prepping one day, sitting by the pool, for my next dope show, I got asked a question by Todd's Comics and Cards that made me start thinking. And for you, by the way, the people that want to ask me questions, you can ask me on Messenger, IG, or my YouTube. Just leave it down in one of the comments and I'll get to it. But Tomic's Comics and Cards got me really... Todd's Comics and Cards really got me thinking. He asked me what five books would I pick out of my comic book collection if the hurricane was coming. And I had to make a run for it. And I thought about it. I had to stew upon it. Uh, do I go for my five most valuable books? Because uh, they would be hard to replace. Do I go for my five most rarest books? Because they would be hard to replace. Do I just get my five favorite books? Don't worry about value. Or do I just get the most sentimental books? There was lots of different ways to go. But today, today, we're going to answer what five books I would get out of my personal collection if a hurricane was coming. And I could only save five. What five would it be? And I was like, uh, what direction do I want to go? And how real do I want to get with the public at Doptopia? And uh, I always keep it real with you guys. So I'm going to keep it real today. The shit's getting real. Real. Uh, and usually on here having a lot of fun. But I'm going to tell you some personal stuff today. So, first of all, the five books I would keep. I have settled on five, and uh, let me just say, growing up, I was not a fan of Superman. Superman was perfect. He was a Boy Scout. He could outrun Flash. He was stronger than Hulk. He was perfect, but over time, I learned to appreciate Superman. Uh, when I became a father... And my son was six years old. He was diagnosed with diabetes one, not two, where you can, uh, two is usually for overweight people and you have a chance not to become a diabetic. But if you get diagnosed with, with uh, diabetes one, you're usually skinny and your pancreas quits working. He was six years old when he was diagnosed. He's 13 now and it has been a battle. And I try to be Superman now. Uh, I understand more about Superman now because Superman, I have found out Superman isn't perfect, but he strives to be perfect. And I strive to be the perfect dad. I strive to be the perfect husband. I strive to be the perfect employer. Uh, I, I strive to be the perfect person. If you're broke down on the side of the road, I, I will help you. Um, and there's many a nights I have to get up with my son and his blood sugar is low or high. If it's low, I have to give him uh, something sweet to drink like apple juice. And if he's high, I have to give him insulin. And sometimes there's been nights we get up three or four times a night and I stay up for hours every night and have to be at the steel factory the next morning. And then there's other nights I get to sleep all night. I mean, you never know how the life of a diabetic is always different. Uh, but I strive to be Superman. When I'm up at night, I have really, there's been nights I've thought about Superman. And uh, the first three books out of my private collection, I would keep. The first one would be this Superman 6. Uh, this is a 2.5 CGC blue label from 1940. This is Superman 6. I have lower numbers than this, but this is my favorite book of Superman. This is number six, and uh, this is one of the ones I would keep. Another one I would keep would be C 
Superman number nine. This one right here is a beautiful 3.0 CGC blue book. And this one is from 1941. And he is busting out of the pages. And the last one I would keep of the Superman books out of my top five would be this number 11 right here. This number 11 is from 1941 also. It is iconic Breaking the Chains cover. This is a 4.5 blue. This one I would give to my son. I have a son, a daughter, and a wife. So these are the three books I would tell them to keep and sell the rest of the collection. And each one would get one Superman book to remember their super dad by. This one would go to my youngest son with diabetes. Uh, as the chains represent diabetes, and I would tell him to break through the chains and break through the diabetes and uh, live your life and don't let nothing hold you back. Uh, don't let diabetes hold you back. Don't let these chains hold you back. So this would go to my son. My daughter, which is older, would get number nine. She would get this one. She's fixing to be a nurse. She's going to nurse at school. I would tell her to break through the, just like this guy right here, Superman just broke through these pages. Just break through life the same way. Don't let nothing hold you back and you can become anything you want. And uh, this one has a birth, uh, uh, a Christmas card from uh, my son Aiden that did this for me. And uh, I don't have the year on it, but I got it for Christmas one year. And there's our two cats and me and probably my wife and my two kids. And there's the fireplace with the stockings. And there's the tree with nothing on it. But this was a gift from one of my kids. And then the last one, if I was to pass away, I would give this to my wife. It's number six. Uh, her birthday is June 6th. So she would get this one. She she's uh, probably wouldn't want it, but this is what I would give her. And these three books... I like to sub-collect. I like to find things. These are all the yellow covers that are low-digit Superman. Uh, I like to sub-collect. And what I mean by sub-collect is sometimes I don't like to collect everything in a series, but I like to find stuff that are like, hey, look, 1 through 11's got three yellow covers. I want all the yellow covers. Or I want all the red covers. Or I want all the covers with blah, blah, blah on it. You can sub-collect and build your own collection the way you like. The last two books in the collection would be for me. I would keep my Incredible Hulk number one because he's my favorite. Uh, he's my favorite, you know, monster, hero, villain of all time. This is a 2.0 blue label complete book. Uh, this is my favorite book personally of all time. Uh, there's not a better book ever made than this. And this is one of my favorite stories. And I'm not talking about comics. I'm talking about just favorite stories of all time. And people ask me, well, what number? I'm like, it ain't a number. It's just the Hulk evolving. Uh, I mean, this is 1962. So we're talking, you know, 80 years ago. Hulk's evolved over 80 years uh, from size to strength, to color. I mean, when he first came out, he would just turn into Hulk at nighttime. And, uh, you know, now <laughs> he turns into Hulk every time he gets mad. I mean, it took him a while to, it took Stan Lee and the people a while to redefine him and get him right and get the story right. And the story is still evolving today. But this is my favorite character. So this would be the fourth book I would keep. Uh if I was grabbing five books in a hurricane. And the last book I would grab, it's not a big money book. Uh, my second favorite character of all time. This is the first appearance of Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider and Hulk are my two favorite characters of all time. Uh, they're very similar in a lot of ways. Both of these guys change. Uh, they go from being a normal man to becoming a monster. Uh, and that's the way with everyday life. You know, if you think about the Hulk, the Hulk has anger problems. A lot of people in this world have anger problems. And when Stan Lee invented the Hulk, you know, Hulk could represent a lot of things. Uh, changing into the Hulk could be your uh, anger problem. It could be your uh, addiction problem. Uh, it, could be, it could be anything from alcohol to pills to anger to, uh, uh, you know, 
maybe you have a, a lot of girls, especially, uh, have problems where they don't want to eat food. Everybody has a hulk in them. Uh, everybody has something like that. So uh, everybody has something they, they turn into. Um, hell, I know girls that turn into whores. Maybe that's their hulk. Uh, they regret it later and they cry and they got daddy issues, but everybody has some kind of hulk in them, some kind of uh, another personality. You know, I always thought about as a kid when you got the little angel and the devil on your shoulders talking at each ear. You, everybody has personalities, the yin and the yang. Everybody has some kind of hulk inside them. Uh, people that are schizophrenia, depression, uh, that's hulk. And so a lot of people can relate to hulk. Ghost Rider's the same way. Ghost Rider, you know, he wakes up, don't know how he got to where he's at, just like Hulk. Don't remember turning into the Ghost Rider. That's a lot of drunk people coming home from bars. They don't know what that, what kind of chaos they've caused, who they've killed on the road. Uh, a lot of people can relate, you know, to these two characters, and I can relate to these two characters. So, but anyway, I didn't want to depress you guys too much, but that is the top five books. I would keep if a hurricane was coming. Hulk one. Just because I love Hulk. He's my favorite character. I would keep this Ghost Rider 5.0 blue label. Because Ghost Rider is my second favorite character. And I would keep Superman 11. Superman 9. And Superman 6 for my kids. Because uh, I want them to have them when I'm gone. And uh, we're under 12 minutes. So until the next time, don't just collect your comics. Read your comics.